Right, so good evening and uh, ex excuse my voice because I'm not keeping well. So uh, my voice can come out to be a little nasal. So just, uh, you know, bear with that. But anyway, uh, I'll be <coughs> keeping uh, making a video today on group theory. So this question came in June 2016 for four months. And I'm going to tell you how to analyze a particular question, right? Because, see, question, if you do it in a, in a particular way, you can solve it in a very less time, right? And on the other hand, if you try different methods, it can lead to either one of the things. It can lead to, uh, you know, you it can lead to uh, a consumption of time, a lot of consumption of time, or you might get confused and not be able to solve it, right? So these are certain things that are <coughs> that happen, right? So anyway, so this question came four marks in June 2016, and it says a pair of symmetry elements associated with only polar molecules, right? So you have to see in these there are a pair of symmetry elements given in each option and you have to see which ones are associated with only polar molecules right so in my previous video on general aptitude i told you that how to reverse engineer a question right so in this method you'll put in the options and see whether you come out to the right answer instead of going to the question right for example over here if you see first thing your eye uh, you your eyes should go on to the question you should go on the options that are incorrect so if you see if you see this uh, this is tetrahedral. Now methane is tetrahedral. Uh, okay, tetrachloro uh, CCL4. CCL4 is is nonpolar. Is highly nonpolar. CH4 methane is nonpolar. Right. So there are a lot of examples of tetrahedral molecules which are nonpolar. So you can cancel this out, right? Because it's asking with which are associated with only polar molecules, right? Now you see two options: d infinity H and c infinity V. Now if you see d infinity H. Now, infinity I told you is always for linear molecules because let's say a linear molecule like CO2. So we have CO2 as a linear molecule, right? Now CO2 will have, if we, if we consider this axis, right? If we consider this axis, we can rotate it by infinite amount of times and still get the same molecule, right? Because this, the, these atoms are spherical, they are, uh, they are spherical. So no matter by which angle you are rotating them, you will get the same molecule. So that's why these molecules, linear molecules have infinity as their uh, as their uh, symmetry element, right? Sim uh, this term symbol, sorry, term symbol I am saying, uh, <laughs> right? So th these have their uh, th the point groups. Th the point groups are infinity, right? So if we now, if you cut this molecule, you can cut it. See, this is our this is our uh, principal axis, right? So you can cut this molecule like this also in half, right? And you can cut this molecule as this also. So it has a sigma v plane because it is cutting the axis in a parallel fashion. And has a sigma h plane also because it is cutting in a perpendicular fashion, right? Now imagine which molecules can have a sigma h plane with the, with c infinity point group with infinity point group. Only those molecules can have a perpendicular plane which are which are symmetrical. See, sigma v plane all linear molecules will have because linear molecules are planar and you can cut them in the plane. So the so the plane over here is the whiteboard, right? So you can cut these molecules in whiteboard any linear molecule. Because linear molecules are planar, but if you want to cut them in a, in a plane which is perpendicular, then these molecules should be symmetrical. And symmetrical molecules have zero dipole moment. So again, d infinity h also cannot be the answer because symmetrical molecules will have zero dipole moment and they won't be polar. So you can cancel these two options out. Okay. Now you are left with c two v c infinity v c three v c two h. Right. Uh, now C2H if you consider, now I had taken example also of this molecule and immediately if you have attempted pre previous year papers, it should immediately strike that C2H, right? Again, a perpendicular plane. Now if you take this molecule, right? N2F2. So you take cis N2F2 and trans. This question also came in June 2017 itself, right? N2F2, okay? So this is cis and the other isomer is trans. Uh, that is trans. So I have attached a link to that video. I have solved this particular question. So you can see the link somewhere over here. Or you can go to my group theory videos. I have also solved I have also done these questions over there. So now N2 F2 and this is trans, this is cis. Now if you take this as the principal axis, right? And you rotate this molecule by 180 degree. Okay? You take this as the principal axis, this axis, and rotate it by 180 you will get the same molecule and this is a planar molecule so you can cut it in the plane so this is our axis and imagine this whiteboard to be the plane so the whiteboard is perpendicular to the principal axis 
So you can say that this is this has a C two H coil group, right? But if you come onto this side now, if you if you place this uh, place this axis as a principal axis and rotate it by one eighty, this molecule this F will come on this side, right? So you won't get the same molecule. So this is not an axis that we want. Okay. So what axis can we have? We can have this axis, this axis, right? Because if you rotate by one eighty degree, degree this fluorine will come over here and this fluorine will come over come over here and we we'll get the same molecule. So this is our principal axis and since it's a planar molecule, so it also has a molecular plane like this, right? It can be cut in the molecular plane, but it will be parallel to the principal axis. Or you can cut it also like this. You can cut this molecule also like this, right? It so it has, but still it will be parallel to the principal axis. To have a to to have it perpendicular to the principal axis, you have to cut it like this. But there is no way you can cut this molecule because these fluorines would not have fluorines over here to get reflected, right? So this has a straight through V. Now if you see which one of them has zero dipole moment, the trans isomer will have the zero dipole moment because these fluorines are opposite. Uh, so so these dipole moments are cancelled out. And so the net dipole moment is zero. So you can say that even C two H is not the correct answer. So now you have come onto the correct answer is B. Now this is called as elimination method, or you can take options, right? So you you don't have the time to take each and every option and see. So you just pick out one. Okay, use D infinity. How to solve D infinity, right? Then C two H you solve taking example. Then T D you definitely you know T D molecules, saturated molecules. You can take examples like I told you methane or C C L four. And you can definitely mark out the wrong answers and then come on to the correct answer. So you do not need to check even check also that if C two is satisfying the uh, the answer or not, right? Because you el eliminated the rest. But still, if you are uh, having doubts in your mind, you can take example O H two water. It's a polar molecule, right? And C infinity V C infinity V H C M if you take H C M, right? So this is a linear molecule, but it has a net dipole moment, right? So this is also polar. So this satisfies C infinity V and this satisfies to C two V also. O H two water C satisfies C two V and C infinity V is satisfied by uh, hydrogen cyanide, right? So these are this is a certain way that I wanted to tell you to analyze the question, right? So this question, it if you solve it by the conventional method, it will take you about five six minutes and you don't have that much time. So you have to solve it by elimination method and it will take you thirty forty seconds. That's about it, right? And uh, I would just request you guys to please subscribe to my channel. This there's this red button down below. Just subscribe to my channel. Okay, that means a lot to me, especially when I'm uh, you know when I'm not well and still making videos for you guys. And I'm just kidding. It's okay. I mean I just like making video for you guys. Like even if I come across a paper which is not uh, related to my research work, I still read it so that I can give you guys a very comprehensive view of that particular topic. Right. So it's not. It's not that I'm putting a lot of effort. It's just that I like a lot. I like teaching a lot, and that's why I'm doing it, right? So anyway, uh, all the best, and uh, wait for my future videos. Thank you.